the NBA and WNBA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet $50 at WinBet and get $200 in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and get started today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash in their new over-under game. Just head over to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone and join the SGPN group. And Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. And make sure to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Yes, sir. We are here in Vegas. This is crazy. I was on the craps table last night. I lost money. I figured out what I was doing, and then I won money back. And so that is the spirit of Vegas. We're here in the Blue Wire Studios, the NBA, WNBA Gambling Podcast. I'm your host, Villain Real, Really Real, Terrell Furman Jr. in the building. And uh, I got my guys with me in person this time. Throwing it over to my co-host of the NBA Gambling Podcast, Moon Off the Machine. Manji, Moon Off, what's up? What's going on, my man? Day two. Blue Wire Studios, absolutely beautiful facility. Uh, made some money in WNBA last night, not so much in the NBA, but uh, it's a new day. Glad to be here with you guys, man. It's going to be a lot of fun again. And you know who didn't win money in WNBA last night? I did not because, man, I thought Liz was going to go off against them girls last night. Man, I really did. But we also have my co-host for the WNBA Gambling Podcast, my guy. You know he's with me, Scott Reichel. Scott, what's up? Yeah, nothing much. I had a pretty good day yesterday, I'm sure. As pretty a lot good of you day. Can tell, yeah. yeah, pretty good. Had a nice, pretty good. <laughs> had, a, had a nice 17 to 1 parlay, which I hit on the air, which was nice. On top of that, you know, Terrell, I got to call you out. You went a little bit soft. Instead, somebody needed to be the villain. Yep. And I ended up going yep. with the Celtics. I was pretty much by myself there. I thought they'd win handily, and they did. So overall, a very nice day for me. At least one of us won in the NBA. But to to be honest, the game itself, shocker, was not entertaining at all, which has been the story of the NBA playoffs for the last couple of weeks. Yep. But, you know, I felt better about it because I made money on it. So there you go. And, you know, it's it just turns out that this wasn't the game with the most stakes. I just feel whenever it is, the game with the most stakes is when they're going to let you down. Uh, th- th- it's going to happen. I'm trying to tell you, look, I'm looking at you right there. They're, the Boston Celtics are going to let you down one day. I'm trying to tell you. They've been doing this for two years straight. It's not stopping now. And so it was a great game last night. The Miami Heat got absolutely killed in that game. We were downstairs watching that game, actually, and in awe because there was like seven minutes to begin the game where they couldn't even hit a field goal. Yeah. Are you serious? What was it 18-1? 18-1. Yeah, 18-1. to one. <laughs> And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But it's one of those games where the Celtics defense was just absolutely on it. Jason Tatum had a great bounce back game, as we know him to do. I thought that was going to be the chalk play, and it was. And it turns out the public got got some money there. Yeah, look, I mean, when your starters score only 18 points in that playoff game, good luck trying to win that game last (laughs) night. I mean, look, like you guys highlighted, they scored their first basket with like four minutes left in the first quarter. And – Miami only ended up scoring 11 points in the first quarter. I mean, that game was pretty much over in that first quarter. We knew it. Um, but, look, it's only one game. Good news for Miami. It's only one game. It's tied up 2-2. Two to two. They head back to South Beach uh, tomorrow night. Um, and, looking now it's a best of three. So, uh, now, the stakes have, uh, now, now, now the stakes have increased. Yeah, absolutely. But enough about that lackluster boring of a game tonight. Maybe. Just maybe we get a better game tonight. And if you want to bet that game tonight, then all you got to do is go down to win bet because win bet has an awesome bet $50 win $200 promotion where a $50 bet qualifies you for up to $200 in free bets. Plus the win bet casino is offering you a hundred percent deposit bonus up to $1,000. All users can receive a $20 free bet when they win, lose or push a three leg build your own bet parlay between Thursday and Saturday. So, you can go take advantage of possibly a game five for the Mavericks and the Warriors. We'll see. But definitely take advantage of the Miami Heat series and go play that three-leg build your own bet parlay. Plus, the match is coming to win. And you can bet on it on win bet 
Currently, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers are laying $2, minus 200 favorites. And honestly, I really feel like they should be like minus 1,000 favorites because I just don't think Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes can play golf. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers are old. We've seen them play golf before. I don't know what Patrick and Josh have been doing, but they are a plus 165 underdog to go out there and win that game. It's so much to choose from. All you have to do is download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and get started today. All for such a change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 20 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And now we are on to Sleeper, where they have the fastest growing fantasy platform. Me and Scott definitely use it. Moon off uses it. Everybody uses it because you can do your dynasty league up there. You can do a keeper league. You can have your rookie mock draft. Me and Scott just recorded a rookie mock draft for the SGP and Fantasy Football Podcast not too long ago. And it is such a game-changing product because not only can you play fantasy football on there, but you can also tap into their new over-under game. It's super simple. Just choose a sport, baseball or basketball. I mean, I'm a basketball person, but Moonoff over there likes baseball. I, you know, you know, each to each its own. You know, tomato, tomato. Some people like some things. Some people like other things. Man, well, you know, do what you do. Do what you do. But so this is how you do it: pick two or more players, pick their props. It could be like hits in baseball, points in basketball, whatever it is, whatever your choice, your choice is. And you can pick the over under on those props. And if you pick correctly, it will get you from 2 to 20 times the money you put in. That is why I'm so excited about this game because it's the only app where I can join my buddy's contest. So I can go and I can beat Moonoff. I can beat Scott. I can beat Sean. I can beat Kramer. I can beat all of them in this game. And you can come in and you can try to beat me, but I'll beat you too. It doesn't matter. I will beat everybody. <laughs> so tap into Sleeper and... If you want that promo code, it is sleeper.com slash SGPNBA, and you can get an automatic up to $100 deposit bonus when you deposit up to $100. So head over to sleeper, SG, sleeper.com slash SGPNBA and go get that deposit bonus. Tap into Sleeper. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. All right, guys, we got some, some games to get through here. We're going to start with the NBA, then we're going to tap into the WNBA. Starting with the NBA, we have Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals, the Golden State Warriors at Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks are laying one. Over 215 and a half is the over under. Moonoff, are you buying any stock into the Dallas Mavericks actually trying to do something in this game? This... <sighs> This is the last time I'm gonna bet on them tonight. Obviously, it might be the last time I'm gonna bet on them tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I think they had a great shooting, or sorry, they had a poor shooting night uh, in Game Three against the Warriors. And you know, there's some stats that I've been looking up. You guys know I'm a stats guy, and some things that kind of stuck out to me. So I'll give you two here. So um, they shot about 30, 30 for seventy five from the field in Game Three in their loss at home against Dallas. Shout out to my man Dave Sherpin in the house. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, I think that, look, the Ma since then, uh, if the, when the Mavs have shot 41% or less from the floor, they're 11-0 straight up and 10-0-1 against the spread since January uh, 2021. All right? And then one more I'll throw at you. The Golden State Warriors have lost five straight games coming off of win off a road playoff win. Mm -hmm. All right? So they're just 2-14 and 14 against the spread in the following game mm -hmm. if it's on the road. So some stats are backing it up here. I just don't think that uh, the Dallas Mavericks are going to lay down here tonight. Uh, I expect the the role players to shoot better at home. Uh, I think that this might be a game where, you know, Dallas just comes out, that they're motivated, because if they get behind at halftime, Terrell, and Scott, you guys know this, that the Warriors will take it over in the third quarter. They're a third-quarter team. Yep. And so I I'm looking at it taking first quarter and first half for the Dallas Mavericks. If they're out to a lead, maybe they can weather the storm in the third quarter and, and maybe push this to a game five back in San Francisco. So I'm going to take Dallas here tonight. All right, Scott, what are you doing? So what I do know is that Terrell is not been the only one working out this past week because Reggie Bullock got uh, that, card you know, he got that cardio show. in. You know, Reggie Bullock got that cardio in last game. What'd he go, 0 for 10? But there's a <laughs> lot of running back and forth, so he might have lost a couple calories there. But still, I'm still looking at Dallas early in the game. 
because Golden State, we've seen struggle in the first quarter and first half of some of these games, especially on the road this season. Golden State's been a pretty terrible first quarter team on the road. And Dallas, you're hoping, will show something. Now, I know you can try to read in between the lines regarding the actual quotes for both teams leading up to this game. The truth is both teams had pretty horrible quotes. Curry said he's going for, he's, you know, they're looking at house money. So you think they might just be kind of going through the motions, maybe waiting to clinch the series in game five at home. And then Dallas comes out and Luca says in the press conference, you know, I'm just happy to be here. You know, I'm still a young guy. It's a learning experience for me. Yeah. I don't want to hear a learning experience when I'm down three nothing. Yeah. So I feel like both teams had some red flag quotes that kind of cancel each other out. But I do like Dallas first quarter, which I actually threw in my parlay, which I have over here. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't try to move past that. Talking about why I threw it in the parlay. Now you got to read the parlay because you hit seven, plus 1,700 yesterday. So oh, now why, you got to read the parlay. Why don't you save that for the pick segment? Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll, Make we'll the people see. wait. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I, not, I'm I, not trying to wait. Matter I, of fact, let me see what you got. I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask you guys <laughs> this. Um, the, the comments that you just mentioned about Steph Curry, do you think that they do want to get this done on their home floor, lift that Western Conference Finals trophy on their home floor? I don't think it matters. Who cares? I think most teams just want the rest, especially with half the teams banged up because you've been playing a bunch of basketball for, what, the last six months? Mm -hmm. Longer, including the offseason when you're working out all sure. the time. So Golden State, if they end up winning tonight, and let's assume... While you're doing that, let me just that, go ahead. And... Yeah, get the broom ready. Let's assume that Celtics and Heat end in six games, regardless of who wins. Let's say it ends six, maybe even seven. Golden State will have a significant rest advantage going to the NBA Finals. And you can make an argument that it's nice to actually clinch in front of your home fans. You know what's nicer? To clinch a championship trophy in front of your sure. home fans. So yeah. if you have a better chance of getting the overall title because you had a significant rest advantage where maybe right. Otto Porter <clears throat> – can actually come back. I know he's going to miss game four. Iguodala is expected to come back. But if you buy your team extra rest time, I think it's going to pay dividends. So even though, of course, it's nice to have the home crowd in front of you, I think the Warriors will be just fine with winning the championship of the Western Conference on the road. Look so, at them. Fair look, enough. Look at look at the Davos, Dallas Mavericks in there. They in there. We got the not Luka, the, though. Lucas the Denver Nuggets. No, the yeah. 2021 Denver Nuggets are in here. We got the... Uh, who else in here? We got the Miami Heat actually in here as well. Got John from Moran 2021. In there. No, John Morant's the not in Grizzlies there. In no, there. John Morant's not in here. You so got, you, you, you the thought Grizzlies you, in there. No, they not because the Memphis Grizzlies didn't get swept. So the Grizzlies are not in here. But we got the 2020 Indiana Pacers. They in here as well. <laughs> and we got the oh 2020 Brooklyn Nets Brooklyn are in Nets, here as well. Yes. Yep. And oh my gosh, look at this. The 2020 Philadelphia 76ers are in here as well. Look at all those teams that they got swept in the past two years. And we're adding the Dallas Mavericks to them because look, that's it for them, guys. Let's just go ahead and let's just go ahead and wrap it up because this was a bad matchup for them. And I'm willing to admit it because I was on the Mavericks in the beginning of the series, and I was banking on Luca. And Luca's done everything that I thought he was gonna do. He really has. But he needs another he superstar. Needs, he not. I wouldn't even say he needs another superstar, but they just gotta find some consistency. If they could consistently make shots, even with this roster, they could have definitely because the defense has been there. It hasn't been like. Golden State's been running the score up on them this entire series. No, it's just the defense has been there. So they can't make anything. Reggie Bullock was 0 for 10. That's just 10 shots. Didn't make a single shot. 0 for 7 from 3. That's what his shot. And they were wide open looks. Who's it's fault not is like, that? It's not like that we were sitting there. It's wide open looks. It's Bro, just they, that, that they didn't Sean's have fault. it. But you, you forgot. Sean for that you forgot. Yeah, though. that is definitely Sean's <laughs> fault. Bro, one, once again, though, Sunday's cardio day. So he was making sure he got those workouts well, and I those mean, suicides. He, that's routine, all he was but... doing. He was just running up and down the court. He yes. obviously didn't want to do anything else. He was just up and down the court. Oh, let me. <sighs> Struis was a day behind, though, because Struis had the same cardio workout Come yesterday. On. What's Struis going on? But Struis hit, like hit, 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 he, he had a clutch shot for them. He had a couple clutch shots for them in game three. After I know. I'm just saying. He had the Tony Snell stat one. Yeah. He yeah. hit the, like, he he hit was, the was Chris Paul a clutch three, and now they're only down by 40. Like, come on. No, I'm talking about game three. Yeah, no. So yeah. I'm I'm on the I'm on the Warriors here. I think that this is sweep. I think this is it for him. Dude, Even with Otto Porter not playing today and he is out, but he they want the rest. Last game either. I mean, he got injured yeah. at halftime. They want the back. rest, and I just don't think it's a good matchup for the Dallas Mavericks because they're just showing an inability to rebound. That was the thing. Like Dwight Powell, Dorian Finney-Smith, like those guys are really gonna have to rebound in basketball, and they weren't able to do that. However, I am on the under today. That's probably one of my favorite bets for this game because. I only see two game strips coming out of this game. 
either the Dallas Mavericks actually do slow some fight and still lose the game because the Warriors are the better team, or the Dallas Mavericks actually blow the Warriors out because the Warriors are playing with house money and they really don't care, and the total still goes under because the Warriors don't even get to 100 points. So I, I'm, I'm with the under here. I think that's my best bet. I've already placed that bet here already. And Do you like Dallas first quarter, first half, or you're not into that either? I would, I would play the first quarter. I don't know if I'm going as far as the first half, but I, I like the first quarter. But I, that third quarter for the Warriors, I think it's still going to be spectacular. So I still would play that Warriors third quarter bet as well. Any player props from you two before we get going? Scott, got anything? Uh, yeah, I mentioned it on yesterday's show. I still like Kevon Looney to go over. The main concern that you had going into the series was the fact that Dallas had really been torturing opposing centers. We saw Aiden and Gobert really struggle defensively being switched in pick-and-roll situations. Looney's not only survived, but he's thrived in these situations, and he's just been very good. So if you want to make an argument that Dallas, we know, is already a terrible rebounding team, especially when they go small with Cleaver playing about 28 minutes per game. But you're looking at Looney who has really been a vital piece for this Warriors team, especially him and Draymond, who have coexisted quite nicely in the same lineup. But you're looking at Looney's numbers here. Really, points or rebounds. Points are at about 7.5, which sound a little bit low to me. Mm-hmm. And if you want to go through the rebounds here, it's at roughly 9.5. I think he's got a decent shot at a double-double tonight. Now, of course, Looney needs to be set up for about five baskets because he doesn't really have many offensive moves. But if you want to look for some value... I do think double-double has some promise since Dallas really just has to overhelp on some of the off-ball movement with the screens and how the fact that they really can't stop anybody from Golden State from getting downhill. But Looney double-doubles about 3-1. to one. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of value, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, no, I do. So Come on uh, off, what you got? I'm looking at Looney. Uh, look, I, I got to go back to the, the to train for me. I mentioned this yesterday, Reggie Bullock. I think he, you have to, like, there's no direction for you to go other than up. Mm-hmm. After what happened in Game Three, right? So or, I, the, I, or the bench, but they don't yeah. have anybody else. Yeah, they don't, exactly. Form, so. so nobody else on the bench. So I'm gonna go back to him. I also kind of do like uh, Jalen Brunson tonight. If you want to go points, rebounds, or just take his rebounds, uh, he's been a low key, pretty good rebounder in this series so far. He's had at least five and three, two, uh, sorry, two out of three games. Uh, he's had at least five and three out of the last four games. So if you're able to find a four, or I even like it up to a four and a half. So I'll take those two. I fully agree with what Scott just said about Kevon Looney. I'm also looking at Dimwitty which I see is around yep. 13 and a half for points. Yep. Just based on the fact that we know that Dallas doesn't have much help in terms of supporting cast, and a lot of their guys haven't really shown up for the series. Dimwitty has, for the most part. He's had a couple of lackluster games, but he yep. did have 20-plus points last game. And you're looking at what Dallas has in terms of ball handling. You have Luka, you have Brunson, you have Dimwitty, and that's it, right? I mean, those are the three ball handlers that they have. Yep. So if Dimwood is going to be running the bench unit, and we know that Poole, for example, is going to be the guy who's probably switched onto him the most based on what Dallas wants to run with that bench unit, I like Jordan Poole as a player, let's just say not for his defense. So I do think that you can find some good opportunities there for Dimwood with that second unit. But 13 and a half, even at plus money at some spots, I think there's a lot of value there. So I like the over for Dimwood. All right. I, if I had to throw something out there, it'd probably be Andrew Wiggins because I think Andrew Wiggins needs to make this push for Western Conference Finals MVP. He's been one of the best players of the series, and he's I wouldn't say he's shut down Luka, but instead of Luka score, going out there and scoring 70 points, he's held Luka to like 40 points, and that's pretty good for in relatively <laughs> in relative fashion because Luka definitely could have gave them boys 70 if he wanted to if Andrew Wiggins wasn't there. So, yeah, I, I like Andrew Wiggins here. I think that Andrew Wiggins could, ha- could go out here and have another good productive game. He's really feeling himself in this series. I think he can go out there and hit his points win total. I think it's at like 16 and a half. So what are the odds that he actually has to win the Western Conference MVP? I think because, it's like 8-1, like to one, No, I, to one. I know that those were what the written odds are. I'm saying realistically. Realistic? I think he has we, a good chance. Yeah, has, I, I think he has a good chance. I think it's just going to Curry. I, the way that I see it, Curry's shooting numbers in the series have been so fantastic. That defense has always been... I just say undervalued in these MVP awards, which you've seen in the past. You can't say that in Andre Iguodala won Finals MVP. No, I'm saying Iguodala won Finals MVP because he was originally inserted into the starting lineup and he changed the entire complexion. But that's also because Curry wasn't having a very efficient series. Curry has been unbelievable mm-hmm. in the series. So if you want to talk about his realistic chance to win Western Conference MVP, I think Curry's basically a slam dunk. I think the one chance that Wiggins has is if Curry has a brutal game tonight. I mean, like, four for 16 bad, like a Tatum game, and then Wiggins goes for 30. But if you want to go based on public perception and the shooting numbers and the dagger three-pointers and all the highlights, I think Curry's basically a slam dunk to win it. But maybe that's just me. 
All right, so you heard it here, folks. Take Curry's under tonight and then take Andrew Wiggins over. And we're going to hit that finals MVP bet as well. Would you agree that, with that, though? That's Curry's, the finals MVP If bet. Curry has a good game tonight, do you really think Wiggins is going to pass him? Probably not. It depends on what, what game Wiggins. Wiggins has been unbelievable. Wiggins is averaging about 20.7 points. Oh, no, he's, I know, it's, it's not yeah. Steph Curry numbers. He's, he's been great. I know but, that overall, including defense, the impact is definitely undeniable. Yeah. But when you talk about what the voters look for, they look for the flashy offensive numbers, and defense is usually an afterthought. If Luka doesn't score 20 points tonight and they win, then you got to give it to Andrew Wiggins. Personally, if he holds Luka under 20, then you got to give it to Andrew Once Wiggins. again, we're going back to what I expect the voters to do. And I think the voters are going to give it to the best player. I think Curry is pretty much a slam dunk to win it. What are the odds for Curry right now? Uh, minus 2,000. For Western <laughs> Conference Finals? For Western MVP? Conference Finals. MVP. Minus 2,000 for that sounds Steph about right. Curry and 20 to 1 for Wiggins. That sounds about right. See, the value is there with Wiggins. I'll yeah. admit that. But yeah. I don't think he's got a realistic shot to win it. He needs a lot to go his way. He needs Curry to be awful tonight. So if you want to go for t- for player prop unders there and you actually do want Wiggins to potentially have a shot, I think Curry needs to have a really brutal game tonight. I don't know. I'd give it a Looney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevon Looney deserves to get, to get Western Conference Finals MVP. All right, let's move on to tomorrow's game. The Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat get together back in Miami, South Beach for Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals. It's all locked up at 2-2. The Boston Celtics are currently favored by 1.5 points. 203 and a half on the total. Scott, what are you doing this game between the Celtics and the Miami back in Miami? So yesterday I was on here giving bad news to everybody else on the show, telling them that I like the Celtics, and I got the nickname Rational Reichel for it because I had a lot of good points apparently, and it worked out because the Celtics dominated, and I'm not going to take a victory lap, but I very well could. Either way, based on what I've seen in the series, Nothing's this is a big studio. I would have took a I was going to say. Like, you could actually do a lap in this studio. You probably could. The headphones it. might fly off halfway through, so I'm just going to make it easier for everyone involved here at Blue Wire. So I'm just going to stay seated. But I think Boston's going to win. Going into the series, I thought Boston would win in six. And my logic was Boston's the more talented team. And the upside is definitely there with Boston in comparison. I think when both teams are on, Boston has a much higher ceiling. I don't think that's debatable. And I think the main takeaway that you can have for the overall series and – I mentioned it on yesterday's show. I think Marcus Smart might be the most overrated defensive player in the league. And it sounds like a hot take because he won Defensive Player of the Year. But Boston's been without him for two separate occasions in the playoffs, and they've had their best two defensive games of the entire postseason. Are we sure Marcus Smart's all that defensively? Yeah. Do we think so? Yeah. Regular season, yeah. They've been so good I'm without gonna, him. I'm going to say a playoff season. But they've been so, so good without him in the postseason. Is that a coincidence? It happened twice? Uh, I mean, the, I think it is. Last night was a really bad shooting night. I mean, we were watching. It the game, was, but, but you saw the intensity was yeah. definitely there. I mean, they had the looks, but they just weren't hitting them either. Plus, we're not, I think it's coincidence. We're not talking about a healthy smart either. We're talking about like a fifty percent, sixty percent ankle injury smart, which also plays a factor. But I don't think Boston's going to lose another game for this series. I, th- <laughs> I think they're winning <laughs> <in> six. <laughs> okay. And the way the way that I see it, as long as Robert Williams is in the lineup. Bam Adebayo is a shell of his former self. And we saw a glimpse of what his former self looked like when he dropped 30-plus in the one game with Adam. But Williams has dominated him every single minute they're on the court against each other. And I don't see that changing. So as long as Williams is on the floor and they can neutralize Bam, they will take their chances with everybody else on the court. And I like Boston supporting cast a lot more based on the star power. Tatum bounced back. Brown was awful, but I do think he will play better moving forward. I think the Celtics win in six. From what I've seen so far, I'm sticking with my pre-series prediction because I know when Boston is on their A game and they're focused, they are much better than Miami. All right, Munaf, before I completely discredit everything. Yeah, you, you can do that if you want. No, you, you go <laughs> ahead because I'm going no, to no. agree with what you're going to say. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying that I – I don't like the Boston Celtics supporting cast. I don't, I, don't, I don't think their supporting cast is good. If we talk about their starting five, yes, their starting five is great. And I've been on the record of saying this, that I think that the Boston Celtics ceiling from if their starting five plays all the way at their ceiling is way higher than Miami. Because Jason Tatum, I believe, is potentially a top 10 player in this league when he is all the way on. I don't think that anybody can stop him. I think he's one of those guys, and he's slowly, slowly becoming, when he gets out of his own head some of the times, one of those unguardable players in the NBA. But Jalen Brown, absolutely amazing, yes. But however, I'm sitting here, and I can tell you, and I can go 10 deep with Miami's roster and go toe-to-toe with almost anybody in the league. Anybody in the league. I can sit in their second strings in and be pretty a pretty decent team. And so 
I, I, I'm not putting too much stock into those guys having a terrible shooting night because I don't expect them to miss a shot for the first eight minutes of the game. I don't think that they will. And while Boston has been good defensively, I'm not going to take it away from the Miami Heat that they haven't been good defensively as well. Yes, they, they've been able to, unable to close games and unable to uh, shoot shots and make their shot all the time, but Miami Heat are still really, really good defensively, and I'm going to take the better head coach and Eric Spolstra, and after he's saying, hey, we had a bad game, we're going to turn it around. We're going to put it behind us. I still got Jimmy Butler, who I believe is one of the top five best players in the playoffs. And I Bam out of box. He's number one. Huh? I think he's the best, been the, best, the, been, the, been the best player. No, no, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking in about playoffs. like in general, like period. Oh, okay. period. Okay. Because who out here, who out here is consistently doing what Jimmy Butler does in the playoffs? Like he's he's absolutely amazing, and he's done it time after time after time. And what what percentage though, health wise, do you think Jimmy Butler actually is? Like 80, I think eighty percent, seventy percent. Even if 70. I but even if I get that, nobody works harder than Jimmy Butler. I'm just, nobody goes harder than Jimmy Butler. I'm just throwing it out there. Heroes so, had some injury issues. Yeah. We saw the offense was awful with Adam. Besides Oladipo, shout out to him. He played well last night. But but in Heroes' defense, they're sit, and what they were talking about pre game was that hey, they're just doing this as. They think that if they give him this rest for this game, he is going to be great in the game after. And at this point, last game was, we talk about the uh, Golden State Warriors talking about they're playing with house money. I mean, the Miami Heat were playing with house money too. They didn't have to go out there and sweep the two games in Boston. They got one. Well, that was That's my, all they needed. They that just was my case for Boston yesterday. Yeah. That's my entire case. Yeah, no, I just, so I just I, believe that right now Boston's the healthier team, and I think that Marcus Smart, to be honest, kind of overrated. Sorry if, I'm, if, sorry if that hurts some of your feelings, but mm -hmm. I think that he's a good player. The Celtics have been good without him. But if you're going to give me Tatum, you're going to give me Brown, and what I've seen from Robert Williams defensively, I think they are a serious matchup problem for Miami. But it's really the similar to what happened with the Milwaukee series. You had the smart back-to-back -back turnovers against Drew Holiday. They blew that game. And then what happened after that? Boston smacked the crap out of them. I think it's a similar story. I think Boston got the wake-up call they needed from that no-show that they had in the first home game in Game 3. And I think they're going to run the table. But we'll see. I do think Boston wins the series in six or seven. I think two things for me for, for this game, game five in Miami. Number one, Jimmy Butler, we saw he didn't play the entire second half uh, in game three, right? And then last game, game four, he only played 27 minutes. Yeah. I think for me, we haven't seen a game from the Miami Heat where the entire team has put it together. Yeah. That's the concern I have. And I think that's what we're going to get in game five, that you're going to get that effort. Kyle Lowry, is, is, he's looking better than he did when he was playing injured, right? I, I think Bam is going to play better at home tomorrow. Expect a big game from Jimmy Butler tomorrow as well. And I think this is going to be a game where you see a complete team effort from the Miami Heat. They've been really good at home in the postseason so far. I, I know they had the game two loss uh, against Boston, but other than that, they were a perfect 6-0 and uh, straight up. Sorry, 7-0 and prior to that game two loss and 7-0 and against the spread. So I think that those are the two things that are going to stick out for me is that number one, you're going to get Jimmy Butler – who hasn't played that many minutes, and you're going to get a complete team effort uh, from uh, this Miami Heat team. So I'm going to take Miami plus one and a half tomorrow. I, I think this series is going to get to seven, guys. I really do. I just think Bam's the key for the Heat, obviously. And from what I've seen when he's matched up against Robert Williams, he's vanished. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to go with what I've seen so far. I'm going to assume that Bam's going to struggle again in the next game. And I think Boston's going to win as, as a result. But that's but, just my opinion. The Miami Heat, four and one ATS as home underdogs this season. So... I, I I'm 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 banking on the Miami Heat. I think that they're the better team than Boston. Although while my Boston ceiling is much higher, I think the Miami Heat can put together. We're, we're in a whole new series. It's the best out of three at this point. We're in a whole new series, and I think Miami Heat can put it together really really quickly. So we have Woo! a guest, a Vegas and, legend, a Vegas legend, and it's super duper cool to have him here with us. Yeah, yeah, those, yeah. There you go. Yeah, those are yours. And then just hit the on. Yeah, and just make sure that on button. Yep. All right. And so right we're going to have them join in here and talk some NBA hoops with us. We got Dave oh. Sherapan in the building. What's Let's up, go. Boys? What's up, uh, man? What's up? What's going on? How are you guys? Nothing uh, much. We're here in areas. First things first, by the way, I've edited a couple of podcasts that you've been on. I've never actually met you. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet Scott, you, too, as nice well. Meet you. Scott, nice to meet you. Yeah. Moving off, good to see you. Yes, yeah, sir. See you as Sorrell, well. yes. Sorrell. Fantastic. What's up, boys? Nothing much. We're just sitting here We're going here. back and what forth. What did I walk into? Hey, we, we were having a heated debate between my who you got tomorrow, Miami We're, or the Celtics? Celtics. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to the squad. Let's go. I mean, okay. the show that I do with 
the Bostonian versus the book. That's Matt. Mm-hmm. He's, he's poisoned the waters. Yeah. Okay. It's all about the Celtics. But is the line still one? It's one and a half. One, one and a half, half now. Yeah. Miami on the bo- favored? Miami, no, Miami no. Dog. Celtics. Miami's a dog. Celtics favorite, one and a half. Miami's plus one and a half. Yeah. But there has been a lot of movement on Boston, which I think is concerning for Miami, in my opinion. Could be an overreaction, Boston. but I'm going Boston. You don't, you don't, think, that's, you're not, you don't think that's an overreaction to them getting killed last night? I just think Bam's been exposed by Robert Williams. That, that's what I see. I, I, think, I think you're right, Scott. I mean, all right, we got to know who's, everybody, who's playing mm-hmm. tomorrow. That's the first thing. How is everybody playing? How important is Marcus Smart? Assuming that he doesn't play. Boston's been good without him. Do they really need him, especially at around sixty percent, to suit up? No, I don't. I don't think they do. But he's going to play. You know, for a fact, if he if he could play, he's going to play. I would think he's going to. I think play. he would. But I'm just saying, it's. I think it's a weird coincidence if that that he's missed two playoff games and they've had arguably their best two defensive performances without him. So that means you should be on Miami if he's going to play tomorrow. Not necessarily because I think Boston's good enough anyway. I'm just throwing it out there that is Boston, hero playing. Hero. Yeah, he should be playing. I'm he assuming playing. he will be. I'll check the injury report. So, okay. So I don't think they released it yet, but yesterday they said that the plan was for Hero to miss game four and be back in Miami for game five. Yeah. The, ba- the way I see it, they basically punted game four, which is why I liked Boston yesterday. They 100% punted That's game what I four. Think. That's why I think we can't overreact mm-hmm. to that. I think a lot of people will. I mean, it's a one-point spread. Miami's live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, right now, I like Boston before the series. I like being 2-2. If I'm Boston... I want to win game five so we can close it out in game six. Mm -hmm. Not that Miami can't win in Boston. They already have. Mm -hmm. But they're not winning game six. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the – I mean, if if Miami wins, we're going seven, right? Yeah. Because they're not winning game six. If you wanted series prices based on the updated lines, I think Boston's winning every game for the rest of the series. I think they are winning in six. That was at least my thought. You. Is that the favorite right now? I didn't look this morning, of like where you could look at series prices. Is that that's the choice, right? Or is so, it Miami and seven? So right now for the series, right now Boston is minus one seventy five. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to go Boston in seven plus two sixty, Boston Miami, and six. Sorry, Boston. Boston in and six, six is plus around one fifty. Yeah, plus, that's plus the favorite. I see yeah, one. The, I see yeah, one seventy two. Yeah. So you can shop okay. around and find better lines, okay. but. It's the same thing as the Milwaukee series, once again. They had that embarrassing loss, and then next thing you know, they came out, they got the wake-up call they needed, smacked the crap How out much of is them. Miami in six? Miami in six. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're living really Ooh, dangerously. No, man, it's not. You no, like so, that. Six no, to one. so, so. That's this the is biggest my, but this is, But this is six what I'm one. talking about. Because if we think about this Miami team, we think about Air Spolstra and how, how he's been as a head coach, he knows that if you have a chance to close these teams out, you want to close them out. So if I'm right and Miami wins this game, they're going to give – they don't want to go back to Miami for game seven. We're like, hey, we, we want to end this in game six. Jimmy Butler and the competitor that he is, and the fact that Tyler Hero got another day's rest, and I think that he can make it for the rest of the series now, they're going to – if the Miami Heat win tonight, they're going to – I think this ends in six regardless. So I don't think we get to seven. I think okay. this ends in wow. six regardless. But I like the chances that you get with the Miami Heat because if they win tonight, they're going to give everything they can to – end it in game six and i think that's the spot where everybody's gonna say oh we're on boston because this is going to seven the whole public everybody's gonna be on boston it's probably gonna be some five or six point spread or something like that and the miami heat as underdogs that they've done all the season get a win on the road but can we say the same thing that if boston wins game five that everybody's gonna be on boston in game six and that's where they let you down possibly possibly i think but I think if, if Miami loses this game right here, then they're dead in the water. I think, yeah, it's going to be difficult to win two or three. The way that I see it, Miami, we know, has the better bench. But what we've seen in the playoffs, bench is important, but you always shorten the rotation. Mm-hmm. And if you want to talk about which team has a better top seven guys, got to be Boston. I think it's Boston. So I'm going with Boston to win the series. You can argue in a regular, you know, ball, Miami has 10 guys. Top seven? They have better top seven? I think you can make an argument. No. No, I think Miami. It's close. Seven. I think it's. it's cl- I, I mean, it's close. I think, it's I think close, you can make an argument either with, way. But with the injuries with Butler, with Hero, and everybody else, mm-hmm. I do think that Boston right now has a better top seven because they are healthier at this point in time. Right. That's where I stand. So well, I like Boston. All right. Well, we've beat that into the books. Before we move on <laughs> we run, to, we run on a guest. We <laughs> we're run. about to we're about to run into the WNBA real quick, Dave. If you want to hop in with us on that wow, as well. How about the Aces? You guys hey, are in Vegas. Oh, what yeah. about this team? Hey, the Aces are smashed oh, the over last yeah, night. Yeah, very very good. 
Very, very good. Before we get into that, we got to talk about Manscaped. And it's funny because I've always told you this story on the podcast, but now I get to tell you the story live. So I'm going to embarrass myself in front of everybody and just go ahead and tell the story live. So I'm going to take my head. <laughs> I had a, I had this chick one time, and you know she was feeling me. She thought we was really, really good and all that, and she said that I needed to uh, take care of more of myself down there. And so, you know, me as a young high school impressionable kid, and I was very, very afraid. And so I had the opportunity, and I saw something in the store. It was called Nair, and you know it said that you didn't have to really shave. You just Wipe and go, wipe and go, and you're good. So I thought I was going to just wipe and go. And when I wiped and go, it was on fire and burning and burning and burning. Yeah, I, re- I really need some water because I'm kind of getting a little bit of PTSD here. So, But now I have Manscaped. And I have no reason to worry about that because Manscaped has spent two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there and the best material that you need to get everything done down there. You got their Lawnmower 4 electric trimmer for below the waist grooming offers skin safe technology so you can really get down on those hairs and avoid nicks and stuff like that because you really don't want stuff like that to happen down there. Plus, you have the jewel pouch that is a pouch designed to cradle your boys in their own special place like a little baby, and you can get all of that done. Plus, you also got the micro model fabric that is a buttery soft, breathable to keep your cool, your cucumber cool, walk, run, strut, and the moisture wicking bossers breathe without breaking a sweat. Look, you guys have to tap into Manscaped, and this is what I have for you a 20% plus free shipping code SGP at manscaped.com, and you can get 20% off plus free shipping with code SGP at manscaped.com. Once the Boxers 2.0 touch your sack, you will never go back. All right. Now that I'm done embarrassing myself in front of everyone and telling that great story, Manscaped, you guys really, like, really, really should make me, like, the face of this because I'm, I'm telling you right now, nobody is willing to embarrass themselves like I just did. So. Are they specializing in face? <laughs> oh, that I hope so. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Stop throwing me off guard. All right, let's get into the WNBA because we you know, have like, a should, large. Should I clap after that read? That I think was, you I mean, have seriously, to. Like, that, was, <laughs> that was really, really that's, good. That takes, like, that takes some balls. No pun intended. But <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, the read is great, but the actual metaphor game that they're having over there at Manscaped, oh, yeah. boy. all-time yeah. heat check. It's yeah, all-time definitely heat, heat check there. there. Terrell, can we take a second – to appreciate the drip right now on our man, the Consig. I mean, look at the kicks. Yeah. Look at those kicks. I had hey, no idea the about dunks. these things. The what? dunks. Yeah. I had no look, idea. Look, I'm, I'm wearing them right now. Are you wearing really? them right now? Look yeah. at this. I got the Georgetown dunks right here. Man, yeah, that's man. it right there. Wait, so, wait, so, nice. so what do you mean you, you, had no, you just stumbled into them? I walked into the store, and I was going to get a sweatshirt. And the kid in the front, this girl that I coached years ago, mm-hmm. she's working in the store. She said, hey, and I don't know if we recognize each other, but she goes, we're doing a shoe release. In five minutes, do you want do you want to try them on? I'm like, nice. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, and she goes, "These so are the lucky. shoes right here." So I tried them on and I walked out with them. And you know, Sean and meanwhile, and Ryan told me these are those are great. And I'm like, I don't even know what you got. That's the perks of being well connected, right? Look, look I at guess so. And meanwhile, I'm on the sneakers app, going batshit crazy because I can't hit on these <laughs> shoes, and somebody just <laughs> offers them to Dave. <laughs> he just offers them to Dave. Are these the hard to get? Are yes, hard to the get sneakers. Them? The sneakers app is literally the most impossible thing to hit on shoes for. For real, it's so hard. Wow. It, I, because there's so many uh, bots, and there's so many people that are like hoarding all the shoes so they can Sounds resell like the them. Sports book. Yeah. <laughs> The man, right. the man just had a flex, and he didn't even realize he flexed. Yeah, he didn't. That's he didn't. And that's, that's what's, what's making me legend. upset. He didn't realize how much of a flex he had. I had no idea. That's, that's why he's a Vegas legend. Oh, All right, man. All right, let's move on to WNBA. We have the Atlanta Dream playing the Washington Mystics. Mystics are laying eight and a half, which is really interesting because me and Scott broke this game down a couple weeks ago where the Dream were at home, and the Mystics were laying two and a half. Now it's up to eight and a half, 157 and a half on the total Sharpen, let's throw it over to you. What are you thinking? I know. Yeah, a little bit. Especially they came, they came in at what, like one fifty one last game. Well, that's, I mean, just the spread seems high to me. Just looking at the numbers, I haven't watched one game. I've only watched highlights. Uh-huh. But I wake up and still look at the lines every day. What did that open? Did, it, that, did that open at eight? It opened at eight. It did, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm leaning dog right there. 
So I've already placed a bet in on the Atlanta Dream. I'm on the Atlanta Dream tonight because they're they're the underdogs of this season. They're four and two right now, and they had the second highest odds to win the WNBA championship. They were just they were already thrown out as one of the worst teams, and nobody thought that Ryan Howard was going to come into the league and do what she's doing right now. And I think it's because Deladon is coming is playing in this game because it's a home game. She doesn't play oh, road she games. She doesn't play road games. And so right. I think it's because Deladon's playing this game. But Billings also has COVID. Yeah, and Billings has COVID. But she didn't play oh, in that last no. game. And so I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it. And when I think about Deladon and how she's been playing, they do make it an emphasis to get her the ball. And it kind of gets the rest of the team out of rhythm just a little bit. It kind of throws them off. So I can tell you this from from the book's perspective. The best time to get the WNBA is the beginning of the season mm-hmm. because there's a preconceived notion and numbers are made at the beginning and then they're not really adjusted, like odds to win a title and stuff mm-hmm. like that because there's so such a little volume in it. So the game-to-game numbers are soft. I mean, some of the best pros I've ever met in my life that walk around these places and bet would kill to get a dime down on a game in the mm-hmm. WNBA because they can't because they're just better at it than the numbers. So if you're thinking that way and that's the way it goes, it's probably the right side. Okay. All right. Scott, what are you doing here? So there's a general rule when it comes to sports betting in, for me personally, when it comes to situational handicapping. When you have an immediate rematch between two teams, which is what the Dream have, I tend to side with the team that lost the first meeting. Uh That's usually how it goes because the books tend to overvalue what happened in the first meeting and you might have a little bit of of a motivation angle for the team to get revenge the other team might get a bit complacent because they just beat this team. They might be willing to maybe take their foot a little bit off the gas here. Mm-hmm. But the Dream are a pleasant surprise. They're not going to win the title. They might squeak into a playoff spot. The Mystics are the more talented team. But I do believe the number's too high. They were competitive in the last meeting. And the Dream, after just losing to this team, I do think will have a bit more energy throughout this game. The last game they play, they both played was a head-to-head? I believe yes, in- it was. So, no, so the Mystics had a game before uh, – another game in between. after that. Yeah, they played the sky in between, but the Dream last game was against the Mystics. So the Dream literally just played hosted. them. Yeah, yeah, they had hosted them. Yeah, yes, hosted. So I know them. now they're on the so road. Now they're, I get now they're on the it. road. It's a little bit different right. based okay, on yeah. that. So, okay, because Deladon's now playing. But okay. I do think Atlanta, based on just scouting, they already scouted this team. They just did, and I do believe that the line's a bit high. So I think you can make a case that even though Washington might win the game, eight and a half for a team that just was competitive against the same team a couple days ago. Right. Seems a little bit large. I'll side with the dog in this one. Okay. All right. Munaf, you want me to tag you in here at all? You want you <laughs> look so I serious. Am, I am sitting over here. <laughs> I'm taking notes on what Dave's saying. I'm taking notes on what you're saying. I'm taking notes on what Scott's saying. So once we get done here, I'm gonna run down to the win and put it in so the So they're typing away. I he's saw he's what just he was waiting doing. for the aces to play again so we could bet the team yep. to, for, to bet the overs all you need to do. Overs, all you need to do. Yeah, it's really that simple. They walk into right now it is they walk into ninety points every game. Yeah. Every game, right? It's yeah. really, really easy for them. It's yeah. hard for the books to adjust because you're waiting for it to not happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, from, from the odds maker's perspective, you're like, that can't continue. Mm-hmm. So we don't adjust it. Well, really, it happened again. Really, it happened again. Then when you guys see the over adjustment, yeah. you'll know to go the other way. But yep. you're right. It is that easy right now. Just Yeah, they're number one in offensive efficiency. They're number one in pace. <laughs> yeah, all you need. pretty simple there, right? Yeah, but if you want to totally go about title odds, I know Vegas right now is the favorite, as they should be, at yep. plus 250. If you could find 250 in the next month and a half, I would be shocked. They should definitely close around, hell, even plus 130 by the start of the playoffs. Yeah. I think Vegas is so much better than everyone else. I don't think, I it's, I don't a, think it's very close. I did get a 4-1. to one. I'm just yeah, look bad. at you. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, look casual, at the sharp, ca- the sharp casual over there. Really <laughs> better getting Flexing. four to one there on title. <laughs> All ones, right, let's move on to the Dallas Wings at the Connecticut Sun. We're also laying eight and a half here with the Connecticut Sun. One sixty on the total here, and all right. I mean. We'll this is the highest about, we'll total about, of the day. We'll talk about the total. I, I is that am, the highest total of the day? 160? I have to go back and check. For, to which which check. game is this? For the, the Sun and the Wings. That's that's extremely high for both of these teams <sighs> to be really good defensively to start the season. I don't I don't know if I'm I'm a buyer of that. Maybe maybe it's trying to tell us to go the other way because it's such a high total. Like, hey, you might as well go the other way. But, Scott, what are you doing with this spread here? Minus 8.5 for the Connecticut Sun. I am going to lean to Connecticut just because it seems like they have finally found their groove defensively. We know that that was the main focal point of their success last year. Defensively, they were great, and on the interior, they dominated on the glass. And to start the season, they had the 
really shocking loss to the Liberty where they outscored them by like 30 in the paint and they still lost the game. I'm not sure how they pulled that one off. But since then, they've been solid defensively. The wings have been inconsistent, but you mentioned the total, and I find the total the most fascinating part of this game. It seems like it's a high total based on the defensive reputations of these teams. I actually like the over. From what I've seen from the offenses, they have been playing really well for the last week. So I do think some of it is based on recent form. But I also think that, once again, when some things look too good to be true, it usually is, especially in Vegas. So I do think that (laughs) they might be daring you to take the under. I'm not going to take the bait. I think it's a potential trap line. I'll take the over. Yeah, I I think the same. I'm leaning leaning to the order as well because both of these teams have been Top five in terms of defense to start the season. Well, look at the recent point and, numbers, though, for both teams offensively. Yeah. They've been pushing the 90s. Yeah, and so it might be one of those games where you're like, all right, well, they're both playing well offensively. They're both playing well defensively, and you think that the defense is going to take over, but they both actually score at will on each other. And But the, the thing, my thing with the Dallas Wings and where I'm a little hesitant to even lay this eight, to catch this eight and a half with them is because they've been really good against – bad teams they've been really good they beat the Lynx last game they beat the mercury who were still up and down with at the beginning of the season thus far and then they beat the liberty and that their best win was against the Myst- the mystics but the mystics came back and got a win against there they're kind of going back and forth there but the sun are like legit one of the top three teams yeah. in the league and so i'm i'm not certain i think that this is going to be a spot where everybody's hammering dallas hammering dallas hammering dallas thinking that, hey, this Dallas team is way better than we thought. But the Connecticut Sun go on this run, and they prove to you, like, hey, just as you talk about the Aces and how much you were talking about the Aces, that they might be plus 130, at the end of the season, you might see us at plus 175 because we're just as good as them. So I'm with the Connecticut Sun here as well, minus 8.5. Dave, are you looking at anything for this game? I'm looking at the lines right now. I think I would side with the favorite and over. Just based on what I'm looking at right now. That seems like that's what we're on, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's I mean, and I know nothing about either team. You don't just like so to, you know. Well, like, <laughs> well, like, just just to be clear, you don't like to brag. But you no, don't you don't know from you don't a like book's to brag perspective. About it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I'm I don't. Just, I don't I don't know anything. Just to answer your question about the highest total on the board, it is between the fever and the sky. Okay. One sixty three. Yeah, one sixty two. That's what's one sixty two and a half on my app right here. Is that going to segue us into the Fever game? Oh, it's 100% going to segue us into the Fever <laughs> game because the Fever are catching 13 against – no, 13 and a half against the the Chicago oh, Sky, the defending champions, Chicago Sky. This total actually has dropped. It opened up at 164 and a half and is now at 162 and a half, plus 600 on the money line for the Fever. You're laying 1,000 with the Chicago Sky and – I don't know about you, Scott, and we talked about this last time that we were up here. It's showing to be really hard for these teams to cover these double-digit spreads like this. Yeah. They, the Fever have been able to do it a couple of times. We've seen the Lynx do it before. It's getting really hard for these teams to, to cover this huge spread like this, and the Indiana Fever are scrappy. They are such – I really don't think, after watching the season thus far, that there is no team that is just boring. Like, all the teams have something that draw you to the game. That's why I tell people you have to watch these games because they're very, very entertaining. Yeah, you do. And so I'm sitting here looking at the fever, and they're fun to watch. They go out there. They compete. That first half, they're always in it in the first half. Whether they keep it up over the duration of the game is depends on the other team that they're playing, but they're always in it in the first half. And so – I'm on the fever in the first half here. I like the fever catching the 13. They may not get the win, but I think that they're going to go out here. They're going to see we're playing the defending champions. We have nothing to lose. Nobody thinks we're even going to be in this game. Let's go out here and compete. Let's go out here and show them that, hey, we're not just going to lie over and just be the worst team in the league. And honestly, we're not even the worst team in the league because the New York Liberty are still out here in the league. So <laughs> I'm, I'm rocking with the Indiana fever here, plus 13 and a half. Dave, is there anything you're looking at from the book's perspective? I'm looking at the futures right now, and this Indiana Fever team has the highest odds, meaning they're the worst team in the league mm-hmm. yeah. based on the futures. Yep. 13 and a half, this, this might be a blowout. Are these games, when they lose, do they lose bad? So it depends. So they'll, in, they'll Indiana compete. does. In the end, that's the problem, yeah. right? In the, end, yeah. in the end, they will. But there is also just as equally a chance that they go out there and they compete, and compete the, the whole first half. Yeah. 
I like the first half. The first half is okay. probably one of my better bets for this game because I think that they're absolutely going to be in it for the first half. I'm looking at my, at plus seven and a half right now, and I think that's way too much. You're getting into three possessions at that point. It's actually so, a good move to shorten the game by shortening the bet with a bad team Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's usually – a depth issue, or they're just not competitive, and then second half it gets away from them. Yep. So if you're going to dive in there, I would I would say that's probably a better play mm -hmm. than the full game. But I mean, I think I'm favorite and under in this one. That seems really high. Yeah, yeah, it is. is. It, I mean, are they, is are they scoring ninety points, a hundred points in this game? That's going to kind of segue me into my favorite <laughs> play on this game. Yep. I actually like the Chicago Sky team total over in this one. What is it? Potentially in the first half. I'm actually trying to pull it up. I can't okay. find it right now. Okay. So if, we, if I can find it. If we go into what they've done on the season thus far, the Indiana Fever are 5-2-1 to the over, and the Chicago Sky are 1-3-4 and four to the under. I, I just want I mean, to the over. To the over. Okay. I, I just want to read off some of these numbers 88 and for, what, for what the Fever have allowed the in the last week and a half because – I think they actually are the worst team in the league. And I know that the Liberty have some star power. They can't rebound. I get it. They're both not very good as, in terms of teams. But the Fever, these are the opponent points that they've allowed for the last couple of games. 92, 94, 101, 85, 86. Wow. So if you're talking What's their about, team total? We got to find That's what I'm saying. It's 88, 88 and, and a half. half? Yep. You can make a it's case. It's a good number. It's a good number, but. Because I thought me, immediately when you read the numbers, Scott, I was like, all right, 90. Yeah. Yeah. They're they, scoring 90. They, they've. Yeah. I was going to say, they've given up at least 92 points in each of the last three games. And Chicago, we know, does have some talent. They got Vandersloot, they got Candace Parker. Kalia Copper, yeah. Finals MVP. My favorite play is going to be team total over because the reason why Indiana has the longest odds, they cannot guard anybody. And that's why this totals as high as it is. It's I not because it. Indiana that's offensively great. is good. It's because they think Chicago might score a hundo. <laughs> so for me, I'm going team total over. Indiana could cover, could keep it close. But I do think Chicago just has too much firepower. And Indiana has provided no resistance at all for the last week and a half. So give me the Chicago Sky team total over 88 and a half. I'll Boys, chime in I, with this. I got to chime in, or I got to get out of here, but I want to hear go what ahead. you have to no, say no, go before ahead. you go. No, I want to hear I this. I was just going to say that nuts. Indiana fe uh, Fever, last five games, are the fastest paced team in the entire WNBA. Yes. Ooh. And they can't guard anybody. <laughs> so you made the case for the overs for the aces because yeah. they, they score very well and they go up tempo. Oh. Indiana goes up tempo because they can't guard. They're like the citadel of of oh, WNBA. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's rough. That's not even nice. Rough. That's but, not even. You went citadel. Oh, I had to. They, I, well, I'm kind of bitter at citadel because they slowed down the last couple of years. They used to be just an all time over oh, team. My gosh. But oh my You guys all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I, I'm in the right crowd That's right why now. It's so right. funny. It's fun. <laughs> Oh, no, you All said, right, boys, you said you I got to get out, out of here. I was going to ask, right. since you have to head out, is there anything else you want to yeah. talk about? No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Enjoy the rest of the show, um, and I'm going to hang out and talk to you after you get done. Sounds good. Okay. But thanks for having me on. Hey, appreciate it. Nice and, meeting you, uh, by the way. Yeah, nice meeting you, too. And, Definitely. You know, yeah, keep in touch. We'll connect we afterwards. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, I didn't want to say it if, if we weren't allowed to say it, but we're <laughs> going to connect afterwards. We'll have your people contact our people. Exactly. Yeah, We'll text each other. Yeah. Our people are right Thanks. outside. All right. While Dave's getting up out of here, let's go ahead and talk about the New York Liberty and the Minnesota Lynx. The Minnesota Lynx are laying five points against the New York Liberty. This line opened up at minus six for the Lynx. 160 and a half on the total. Opened up at 162 and a half. Scott, this is our team. This is our New York Liberty. They are one and four. The Lynx are one and six. We talked about this earlier, and we're both actually on two different sides of this game. Let's give your portion, and then I'll give mine. So since I'm from New York, I reserve the paper bag for the Jets football season. <laughs> I might have to break it out for WNBA because the Liberty are awful. They've mm -hmm. been so terrible this season because they can't rebound, and they really rely a lot on outside shooting, and mm -hmm. it has not gone well for them. And now you're looking at Minnesota. Minnesota is favored by five and a half and they're 1-6. Mm -hmm. That's pretty telling to me. <laughs> yes. Just saying. Now, you can look at the overall size disadvantage for New York, and you look over at Minnesota, you have a future Hall of Famer in Sylvia Fowles there who's in line potentially to go for 20-15 and 15 tonight, maybe even 30-15, and 15, and nobody mm -hmm. would be surprised. Yeah. So for me, I'm going with Minnesota. I think they'll fare well here. But mostly based on the overall records of these teams and just how they match up, I think it's pretty telling a 1-6 team is favored by 5.5. I'm going to take the links. All right, so look, 
it is very telling that a one in six team is favored by five and a half. But, but you, don't, I you don't give a damn. I am not. I don't give a damn because look, and I'm talking to you, New York Liberty. But no, put it back on me. Thank you because I'm talking to you right now. There is no way that you put together those five games that you put together, and you had a week off. You had a week off. You have not played in a week. What is it? It's Tuesday. It has been seven days since you played a basketball game. There is no way that you go in and you lose by five points to a Minnesota team that is one and five. One and five. They're not much better than you. They're not much better than you at all. It doesn't matter. Yes, they're getting players back. Yes, you are not going to have Laney for this game. But Sabrina and I, I'm, Sabrina, I'm talking to you because you know I need that mama mentality to come out to you tonight because there's no way. There is no way. There, I will fade the New York Liberty to to the end of the world because at the end of the day, if they win, I'm happy. If they, lo- if they lose, I win money. But I can't fade them tonight because this is just too large for both of these teams to be just as bad. This is too large, and I'm very, very concerned that this is going to be the spot. I would love to see where the money's at. I think this is going to be a spot where New York Liberty can at least make this competitive. Like, at the very least, make this competitive because they've heard for the past week in the WNBA circle that they are the worst team in the league. They've heard it for the past week. They are the worst team in the league right now. And so I'm, I'm looking at Natasha Howard. I think Natasha Howard is still a bucket, and she can go out there and play. I'm looking at Mickey coming off the bench, former rookie player of the year last year. And this team still has the talent. They just got to put it all together. And I got to think that they have some hard practices. They had some really good – ways to put this together i'm on the liberty plus five and a half sprinkle a little bit on the money line they go out here and they get their second win of the season tonight give me the new york liberty man you have any thoughts tiebreaker i i what have are the pace numbers i have oh okay. all right so <laughs> i was looking at this i was looking at when you were guys talking over the last five games i like looking at the recency numbers new york liberty net rating is dead last in the nba minus 17.8 new york represent Bring, bring I, I will camera say back. this. Bring I will say back. this. I have no, a, bring the camera back over here. Go ahead. New York Liberty. No, it's not here. Yeah, New York Liberty. If you lose this game, I promise you I'm not, I'm not betting New York Liberty basketball the rest of the season because I'm pretty sure that I will be more profitable if I fade you for the rest of the season if you lose this game right here. You can't lose to a 1-5 in five team and you're, being, you're getting five points. You have to at the very least cover the spread. At the very least cover the spread. Terrell and I agreed on one thing, though, during his rant. We both think they're not going to lose by five. I just think they're going to lose by 10. That's where we disagree. <laughs> but we think they're not going to lose by five. Well, it's, a hand, right. it's a road game too, huh? Uh, it's yeah, a road yeah game. it is on the road. But, but they got a road They got a road win against the Sun. Well, this is one thing I do want to wonder, though, because it's a, it's a lot about basketball in general, but really just sports. When you have a long layoff, of course it helps. But at what point is it so long that it actually becomes a negative? Because a week off in the middle of a basketball season, yeah. aren't you going to come out flat? Isn't yeah. there a possibility that happens? You may want to wait for a live number then. But I'm just Definitely. saying, because I feel like you're making the point that a week to, you know, reassess everything and get back on track. Yeah. Are we sure they're not just going to be completely gassed because of the fact that they haven't actually been in a game in a week? Yeah, possibly. This, this might be good juju for, for Terrell. I'm going to say this. I own two basketball jerseys. One's a Kobe Bryant jersey I bought after he passed away. Rest in peace to Kobe. And the other one is Sabrina Ionescu. So maybe there's some good juju coming your way here tonight. Hey, you have the eight, eight jersey or the 24 jersey? Uh, 24. Okay. Eight uh, was hard to find. Yeah, eight was hard uh, yeah. Eight, 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 is, I, eight I, is hard. I, I, was yeah. asking. Yeah. I, I need to get the eight. eight I was going to be very impressed if you said you had the eight. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. All right. Well, after we just had that heated in that heated discussion, I promise you, New York Liberty, like, if y'all, <laughs> you got to beat a one in five team. You have to beat a one in five team. I'm sorry. I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust the number. <laughs> oh I think it's, gosh. I think it's pretty telling the list right. of favor. Maybe we need to get them some athletic greens and some AG1 so they have the energy and the performance and recovery to go out there and be a one in five team tonight. So with AG1, you are getting absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens to help start your day off right. Whether you're going out in the WNBA and you're playing a hard fought WNBA game, or if you're just trying to get your morning run, it gives you everything you need. It promotes your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, and it's less than $3 a day you're investing in your health. I try to tell y'all all the time. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. They don't rhyme for no reason. You don't make words that rhyme for no reason. Health is wealth. That's how you make sure that you take care of your health because health is wealth. And 
Athletic Greens is going to make it easy by giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash SGP. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash SGP. And then after you take care of your health, because health is wealth, not just your physical health, but your internet health, then you need to go over to IP Vanish and tap in with the greatest VPN. I use them. You guys know that I was deployed. I couldn't have people knowing where I was at. I couldn't have people encrypting my data or anything like that. So I tapped into IP Vanish and they were able to encrypt my private details, my passwords, my communications, browsing history, all of that stuff from falling in the wrong hands. And you can use it on unlimited devices without sacrificing one speed, like your computers, tablets, phones, and even your Fire Stick, which you're streaming. In case you're streaming something you shouldn't be streaming, then you can make sure that nobody knows what you're streaming. And they're giving you a 70% off yearly plan for our listeners, a 30-day money-back guarantee, nine months for free. That's basically what they're offering you. So go to ipvanish.com slash SGP and use promo code SGP and claim your 70% off savings. That's IP. V-A-N-I-S-H dot com slash S-G-P. Now, we are going to get to our favorite segment, the Lock and Dog segment. We have two NBA games, four WNBA games to pick from. You can choose from anything. I'm going to throw it off to my NBA co-host, Moon Off. What are you doing for Lock and Dog? All right, let's lock up Dallas Mavericks tonight at minus one. Uh, this number is starting to move towards minus one and a half uh, towards Dallas. I, I think we get one last hoorah from the Dallas Mavericks, and this uh, series will be done in five in San Francisco. So I'll take Dallas tonight as my lock. His brother's the ref tonight? No, he's not. That's uh, a shame. Uh, <laughs> Zach Zarba is, though. I'll, okay. I'll throw that All out right. there. Um, and then for my dog, um, I'll just take an alt line with, um, with the uh, Dallas Mavericks here. I'll keep it simple. Let me pull it up here on win bet. Uh, alternate line, let's go up to minus. Let's go minus four. Dallas Mavericks, I will take that for plus 130 tonight. Okay. All right. We see what side of the table. Moon off is on. Scott, what are you doing for lock and dog? So just to make sure, we're doing one lock and we're not separating WNBA. We're keeping it together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep it together and choose, and you can choose one lock and dog from the whole slate, six game slate. So I'm going to go ultra contrarian because there's NBA action on. Everyone wants to talk about it. I'm giving it a WNBA play because I really yeah. like it. But I also have a parlay that I want to share in a bit. Yes. Right. So first things first for the lock, I'm going to take the Chicago Sky team total over. You said it was 88 and a half. 88 right? and a half, yeah. I got to take it. Indiana's given up 90 plus in each of the last three games. They can't guard anybody. Munaf mentioned the pace numbers. They're the number one team in pace, but they're, I'm assuming, dead last in defense. <laughs> they're in the same span because they can't guard anybody. And you're going up against Candace Parker, Vandersloot, and company. That team total should be 90 and a half. 88 and a half seems too good to be true to me. And mm -hmm. the fact that it's the highest total on the board it's not because of Indiana's offense. It's because they can't guard anyone. So give me Chicago scoring 90-plus. I'll take them over 88.5 for a team total. All right, and what's the dog? My dog for this one is going to be – it's going to be a bit of a tough one because I do like the Mavericks first quarter, but I like the Warriors in the game tonight. Give me the Warriors minus 3.5. I think they'll do enough in the second half to blow it open. Mm -hmm. I want to make a case for the series being extended – I really can't. You're banking on a bunch of Dallas' supporting cast guys to make shots. They haven't made shots besides the first half of game two. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you got to just stop expecting something to happen that's not going to happen. Don't get me wrong. It is possible that Kleber and Bullock especially make shots. I'll believe it when I see it. I know Golden State is fully dialed in defensively with Wiggins, with Looney, with Draymond, and everybody. And Dallas cannot protect the paint to save their damn lives. Golden State's getting whatever they want at the rim, and I don't see that changing. So I'm going with Golden State, and they close it out. It'll be close, but I think they eventually blow it open. They'll win the game by six. Okay. All right. All right, so since I'm on both shop shows, you know, faithfully and sitting in the host chairs of both, I'm going to just kind of split this up. And That's get what I yeah. a normal, A normal, you know, so on the NBA. Oh, we're doing – I just asked you if we were doing this or not. What? No. No. No, you, I, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, Fair you didn't okay. have to if you didn't want to. All right. If you want to, you can. You don't have to. I'll, I'll wait to hear what you're going to say, and then I'll, I'll see oh. if we're on the same page. Okay. Picture. All right. So, NBA side, because I, you know I lock up multiple things. So, yeah. let's lock up Dallas first quarter, because I do think that they come out, and that, that intensity that you mm -hmm. were talking about in game three, they come out with that in game four. So, I'll lock up Dallas first quarter, and then... I'll go for the dog on that side because I couldn't help but not give this out. And I think it said like plus 450. I think that's what we talked about. 
Dallas first half, Golden State money line plus four fifty. I like that. Love that. I think that's a good bet. And then WNBA for our WNBA constituents, we have lock up the Indiana Fever plus thirteen and a half. Too many points. It's just too many points, and we've seen time after time after time they found ways to cover this. No, matter of fact, no. Let's not do that. Let's do Indiana Fever first half plus seven and a half, like that. I know you're going to take the liberty. I know you're going to do it. I really should. You just called out Sabrina on the camera. So you're, you're no, do I re- it. no, no, I'm you're not because Sabrina. no, because I really do. But I'm only getting plus one seventy two on that. But I really, really do think that the Atlanta Dream come out here and get a win on the road. And they're a better team than people are giving them credit for. So while I really do want to take the liberty, and this might fuck me over because I didn't take them, but plus 280 for the Atlanta Dream. Give it to me on the money line. Absolutely. That's my dog for the WNBA. And we're doing pretty good over there, Scott. We've been killing dogs on yeah. that side of the table. Yeah. So we're, we're, I had to give out a WNBA dog. I think you should know I'm on a heater. I hit one lock in a row. Yes, WNBA. that is a heater for us. So that is absolutely a heater I got for the us. Mo- I, I got <laughs> it can't. off my back. You know, I, finally <laughs> bro- I finally broke the seal, hey. got a lock in there, and we're going to make it another And once you break one. the seal, you got to keep going and going yeah, and going. Much. Because so I, just, I broke the seal before this podcast started. I had mimosas right across the hall, and now I have to go again. So we really, really, really have to end this podcast right now. And so, is there anything else you two have to add before we get up out of here? Yes, I have a four pick parlay. Yes, I forgot about that. Go yes, ahead and play. Yesterday it. I hit a seventeen to one, so let's go for a thirteen to one today. I got the Mavericks first quarter minus a half. I have the Rangers first period in hockey minus a half at plus one eighty, which I like. Got the Orioles team total over two and a half at minus one twenty, and the Dodgers money line, and that is a thirteen to one parlay. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to go. Oh, 13 is my number, too. Going to go play that after I go pee. Moon off. You got anything else for us? Last pick I'm going to throw out there. Three three or more three-pointers in the first three minutes of the first quarter. Yes, plus 240. Okay. Hell, yes. All right. Guys, I really thought that I would have this together when I was in Vegas. I don't have it together. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I know people are expecting me to do this, but I just can't do it. I have no idea how I'm going to end this podcast. No idea. Haven't figured it out. Not going to figure it out. I'll figure it out in one day, but I really have to go to the bathroom. So we got to get up out of here. So I'm going to end the podcast just like this. We are out.